Hello and welcome to Quality Management Summaries in Data Flows. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at a number of events, but let's start off with events leading up to defect discovery and deliverable rejection in quality control. What are we saying here? Remember that your deliverable is an output of the process known as direct and manage project work. That process gives you deliverables, but before your deliverable is produced, you should be managing quality. Remember, prevention is better than cure. Prevention is managed quality. You are keeping errors out of the process. You're conducting quality audits, and you're making sure that before the deliverable is even produced, your quality processes, your engineering processes, they're all good. So process comes before product. Now, eventually you will get the product, the service or the result, deliverables. Those deliverables need to be checked by you, the performing organization. So performing organization checks the work, and make sure that it is good to go to the customer. However, at this point, we get a change request. This is not good to go to the customer. The lady on the conveyor belt has found that there's a defect. So we put in a change request and that goes to the change control board. The change control board, or it may not be a change control board. It might just be a sponsor, or it might just be a project manager. Remember, not every project needs a change control board. Assuming we do have a change control board in this example, they will review the change request and let's say they approve the change request. It gets put into a change log. The approved change request becomes an input back into direct and manage project work and also into control quality so that on the next go round, we will execute in direct and manage project work and we will check what we have produced in control quality and hopefully this time it will fit the bill. The second scenario is very similar. It's events leading up to defect discovery and verify deliverable rejection in validate scope. What does this mean? Director managed project work as usual, creates the deliverables, managed quality, checks the process before the deliverable is produced. The deliverable is produced and it goes to control quality again. And just remember that inspection is front and center in this process. This is where we inspect the deliverable internally before it goes to the customer. Now, if we find this deliverable is fit to go to the customer, then we label it as a verified deliverable. It's been verified as good to go. Now, this becomes an input to a new process we haven't talked about yet. It's called validate scope. In validate scope, this is where the customer checks the deliverable for themselves. And here the customer is checking the deliverable, but it fails the test. And therefore the customer requests for change. That change request goes to perform integrated change control again. This is where the change control board will review it and assume they approve the change request. It goes back into the cycle, but I want you to take a look at this feedback loop from control quality. Something else happens here in control quality, we take those quality control measurements and try to identify what the measurements are and we send that to manage quality. And in manage quality, we assess those quality control measurements. Those measurements could be any measurements that were recorded during inspection. Could be taking a look at data in a control chart, it could be taking a look at temperature of coffee that was found to be undrinkable, things like that. Ultimately, you're gonna come up with an understanding of why the quality control measurements are what they are, good, bad, or otherwise. At the end of all this, don't forget, the feedback loop continues, approved change requests will go back into control quality for the next go round. That takes us to the final scenario, and this is events leading up to deliverable discovery, deliverable acceptance, and transition to the customer. As usual, direct and managed project work will happen. Now, 
As you take a look at direct and manage project work, just remember that in the background, in tandem, not only do you have deliverables being produced, there are other very important things that happen right there in quality management. So while you're directing and managing the project work and getting a deliverable in managed quality, just remember you're getting test and inspection, test and evaluation documents. Also remember you are working on any quality control measurements to better understand them. So a lot goes into this stage right here. If this stage goes wrong, then everything else goes wrong. But just remember that in managed quality, there's a chance of fixing whatever problems you encountered in the previous scenarios. The previous scenarios show change requests being issued for errors that were found. Just remember that to solve these problems, a lot of times it will happen in the process known as managed quality. So while direct and managed project work is going on, managed quality is going on, we get deliverables from here, but also remember for your exam, the other important things that we get from both of these processes, we get the issue log from direct and managed project work, we get deliverables, we get work performance data. So just remember that. As usual, our deliverable gets checked, assume it passes the test, we get a verified deliverable, goes to validate scope, tested by the customer, and this time, assume the customer is happy, we get an output known as accepted deliverable. That accepted deliverable goes to close project or phase. This is where you're closing out either the project or phase. And the major output you get as a result of this is final product service or result transition. Also remember that you do get a final report. This is the most direct effect of an accepted deliverable going into close project or phase. You need to transition that deliverable. So this is a preamble to quality. Do you know what quality is? It's fitness for use, conformance to requirements, and customer satisfaction. As a result of that, you will find feedback loops from places such as stakeholder management and integration management. As we go through this, I would like you to, if you need to, refer to your PMBOK guide to get a better idea of a lot of these concepts that we're gonna be talking about. So let's move deeper into quality management. Let's start off the discussion about quality management with plan quality management. And let's underscore the importance of the relationship between develop project management plan and plan quality management. The project management plan is an input to plan quality management. And also from identify stakeholders, our stakeholder register is an input to plan quality management, why? because we should factor in what our stakeholders have to contribute to the question and topic of quality. If our stakeholders have peculiar quality needs, of course we should think about them. And in addition to that, we're talking about things that could affect their satisfaction, we do wanna include them. Also very important, we wanna think about the identify risks process because if we have any risks of a quality nature, we should factor that in. So our risk register is an input to plan quality management. Of course, all manner of requirements should be considered as appropriate. And in this case, quality requirements should be considered. Therefore, we have requirements documentation and requirements traceability matrix. Now from plan quality management, we're gonna get an output that we call quality metrics. And these quality metrics are gonna to go to the other two places in quality management, namely manage quality and also control quality. We'll talk about that later. Manage quality gives an output known as change request 
and that goes to perform integrated change control. Also, there's a loop between perform integrated change control, giving you approved change requests, and that goes to direct and manage project work. This is important in understanding the grand scheme of things that we looked at just previously to understand how an approved change request can influence several go rounds of trying to get a deliverable right. We can see approved change request is also an input to control quality. Control quality and direct to manage project work have this in common. They both use approved change request as an input. Control quality is also a contributor of change requests that goes to perform integrated change control. There's a feedback loop between control quality and monitor and control project work in that work performance information goes into monitor and control project work. In order to do that, work performance data is an input to control quality. Where you see WPD going in, you'll see WPI coming out. Another important feedback is direct and managed project work gives deliverables to control quality. And this is where inspection happens in control quality, inspection of those deliverables. There's also a feedback loop that we just talked about between control quality and managed quality with quality control measurements. These are measurements of the deliverable that are funneled back into managed quality for us to investigate the result. Another important feedback loop is control quality gives verified deliverables to validate scope. Remember, our customer will inspect a verified deliverable in validate scope. There's also the feedback loop between validate scope and closed project or phase where we have accepted deliverables going in. So here's the bottom line. In this area, pay close attention to these three things. One, deliverables. Deliverables go into control quality. We inspect it internally as the performing organization. We get verified deliverables out and that goes to validate scope for the customer to then inspect. And if the customer finds it to be fit for use, conforming to requirements and satisfying them, then you get accepted deliverables. That's a very important relationship to take note of. Also, bear in mind that the project management plan, as usual, is an input to every process in the PMBOK guide except two, namely, develop project management plan and develop project charter. Now, another very important relationship is between all the processes named plan X management. They all donate their subsidiary plans to develop project management plan. So here we can see quality management plan is an output of plan quality management. And we can see it becoming an input to develop project management plan. And just think of it like this. Once the quality management plan is in the project management plan, it fuels other processes in that particular knowledge area. And that's all for project quality management. I hope you found it useful. See you in the next episode.